then also, like I said, there were times where, like I've had police uh, pull guns on me and they, I've heard them call it in on the radio, six foot black male, you know, 250 pounds. Fuck. Like only when they call it in and I realize like, oh, this cop thinks I'm black. I've, I know the difference. And I, I just had experience after experience after experience of being like really adopted and intimate in black life and then also living in white life. And so the anger just comes from being a human being and like having a living heart and seeing what's going on. And it like popped my circuit. Like I did not know what to do about what I was experiencing. And I just get story after story, you know, of, um, you know, me and my, we're riding home one time. Uh, my, we ended up moving around and like leaving Wisconsin, going to Michigan and then Minnesota, Minneapolis. And so we're driving one time late at night doing a over the ro like road trip at nighttime. And we're about to run out of gas. And my dad at about three in the morning finds this little like ma and pop gas station where like it's their little house and then they have one pump and there's the little gas station and they were closed. So my dad at three in the morning goes and knocks on the door. This really nice like white lady in her 70s like puts on a coat and comes outside, turns everything on, makes my dad a hot pot of coffee, this whole thing. And the whole time, you know what I'm thinking, if we're black, we couldn't do this. If we're black, we'd have to just sit in the car and wait till morning and like hope that they don't see us sitting in the car. You know, I one time was with my father-in-law, my black father-in-law sitting in the car. Our wives were shopping for groceries and some white people saw us in the car and we were just sitting there for hours like, but we're just waiting for our wives to go grocery shopping. And they didn't like the fact that in their eyes, they saw two black men in a car. So they called the police and said we had guns and we're going to rob the store. Holy it was shit. Like, yeah, it was just Karen, Karen stuff. This stuff happens to black people all the time. And so the police came. At this point, I'm like 20. We had to throw the keys out of the car, walk backwards. We had our suits on. We just came from the mosque. They laid us on the pavement in the, like, it was snowing in Minnesota. Guns to our head. Where's the effing guns? They're like, you know, grabbing up our private parts and all this stuff. And, you know, I literally am like feeling a gun on my head, uh, lights in our face. And... They said, oh, I'm sorry, you know, someone called. We're just answering a call. They just put us back in the car and drove away. And I'm sitting there with my, like, 60-something-year-old father-in-law, and it's so normal to him that he's not even rattled. And I'm, like, That's shaking. The almost, yeah, I'm like, so sorry to cut died. you off. That's the horror. That's, to me, yeah. that's the horror. That's when you start seeing that there are people on the planet living in the same society as you who... Not only, like, for me, that happens to me. I don't know, therapy maybe, PTSD. I'm going to be waking up in the night freaking the fuck out. Like, I could have died. Yeah. What the fuck? They touched my cock. They were putting their fingers in my ass. How are they not demons? Exactly. Are they from Mordor? What the fuck was that? What just happened to me? Right. Is there some recourse? Like, who is your, I'm suing. What the fuck? There's people who that happens to. They just go home and eat lunch. They're like, yeah, yeah. that's just part of my life. That's what yep. it's like. And, and 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 make rap music where people are like, what's wrong with these people? Why are they making this violent music? Why are they, you know what I'm saying? Like, why don't these people do this? Or why don't they do that? Or why don't they? And it's like, man, the fact that they have not burned America to the ground, the fact that black people have never harmed anyone but each other, the fact that black people have never taken vengeance on a global level, there's not a black nation on earth that has taken vengeance. You know what I'm saying? We think about like, uh, you know, 3,000 people were lynched in the South during Reconstruction. 3,000 human beings. What happened when somebody killed 3,000 white people in, you know what I'm saying, in 9-11? We went to countries that had nothing to do with 9-11 and killed a million people in response. Like, that's what white people did yeah. in America when it's like, that could have been me. I could have died. Doesn't matter what I believe. Just from being in those buildings, just from being an American, I could have died we're going to kill a million people behind that that just share the same religion. Afghanistan had nothing to do with that. Iraq Iraq had nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? So But it's but it's not I mean when you say white people like I was I remember when we realized we're doing another fucking war. You go yeah. to we went to the marches. We you know what I mean there was protests. We the, the, there was like protests, enough protests yeah. that drew the Darth Vader, the people dressed like Darth Vader out. 
ready yeah. to spray us. We, you know, like, is it white people or is it power structures that have, don't give, really could give two shits about September 11th, but they're more concerned about the petrodollar. They're more concerned about making sure we have um, puppet governments in places that have access to resources we don't have. That's certainly not white people, is it? It is. Uh, I mean, I would say it's not, it's not all white individuals. And this is the thing where like so oftentimes like we get caught up in these things about like, are we talking about individuals? But there's a structure rea structural reality to what whiteness is and how it operates. And you see it show up in the same ways over and over and over and over again. So it's like the, the reality of, you know, whiteness is a, I, as a category that was developed for the purpose of power of structural power. So like the, the, those two things, like, I feel like we can't really talk about one without the other. And like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that all individuals felt that way. But we think about like when white people collectivize, like I was a super dope, um, therapist, like racial trauma specialist that I talked to on my podcast called, uh, Resma Menikin. He wrote this book called My Grandmother's Hands and another one called The Quaking of America. And he says, I meet a lot of really cool white individuals. Like they're, they're very cool and they're very beautiful and loving and they're sincere. And they, a lot of them have like sacrificed at, but where are the white groups where that happens? Where's the white culture around that? White culture is around white supremacy, it's around. So, I mean, the Ku Klux Klan has ways that they bury their dead. They have songs, they have culture, like real lived culture. Uh, evangelical Christians have real lived culture that really go to the heart of people. So when it's time to move as a collective, they have that. Where's the collectivized culture for European people um, uh, like uh, around being anti-racist? Like we don't really have that. I'm, hold on. I'm, you asked a lot of questions. I'm sitting there. Th I'm still back at the groups of why. I'm, <laughs> sadly, I'm scrambling. <laughs> It would be no, nice. It, it's a, I mean, the, like there isn't a right away. I'm sure people listening, like you, you. What about the? I don't know. Rosicrucians. They do something, I guess. I, so yes, you're saying that it's like there's a, it's like a, uh, a conditioning or something. It's right. It's a condi It's like you. You sort of like, uh, you know, in in Buddhism, one of the roots of suffering is ignorance. And it, yeah. it's not ignorance like you're dumb. It's ignorance actively ignoring situations in your own life, situations in the world. The energy that goes into actively ignoring these things is causing you suffering. So yeah. what, to actively ignore the reality that you are pointing out is... Uh, Maybe that's, is that what you mean? It's like a kind of collectivized ignorance, which involves like, look, don't look over there. Look over, look, look at this. Just keep looking yeah. at this place. If you look over there too long, then you're going to realize that, uh, you know, you don't, it's like a nice buffet. Isn't this a nice buffet? We're at a buffet. It's delicious, wonderful food. Don't go in the kitchen. Just stay the fuck yeah. out of the kitchen, because if you go in the kitchen, you're not going to want to eat from the buffet anymore. So that's what yeah. you mean. Like, it's like groups of people are like, let's just focus on the buffet. Don't go in the kitchen. I know you're hearing screams from back there. It does sound like humans are being butchered to be added to the meat platter in this wonderful buffet, but can't you just enjoy the food? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, one of the things that Resma says is so amazing. Like, I, I just really... You know, I came, I, I met him maybe six, seven years ago or something. It's been such a revelation. But he says that, you know, trauma, un, un, decontextualized trauma, like trauma that a person has, that they suffer, like something that comes along and like disrupts our idea of what's normal and what's possible and what's real, the, the notions yeah. of safety and, and humanity and things like that. If those things aren't processed, if they're not metabolized, if they're not even contextualized, so like we never actually sit and really deal with what happened to us, that that trauma in a person starts to look like their, their personality. But that's not their personality. That's decontextualized right. trauma. And he said in families, when that happens, it starts to look like this is our family dynamic. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like we're yes. just a messed up family. This is decontextualized yep. trauma. And in, in 
societies and in groups of people, it looks like culture. And so all the things that like have happened in America and in this, you think about the fact that like we got a really strange situation in the quote unquote new world where all these people that came from culture, um, you know, Scottish people, dope culture, uh, German people, beautiful culture. They got language. They have song, dance. Their their music was soulful. They had cl- the clothing. They had all of the things, the beautiful things that human beings produce when they have culture. They lose. All- First of all, the people that fled from Europe, they were fleeing because they were being lynched, castrated, right. b- uh, burned at the stake. You know, when when uh, Marcellus Wallace says, "I'm gonna go medieval on your ass." <laughs> That's what he's talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, yes. So like these things happened there first. And then we come, like these people come to a new place, try their best to exterminate the human beings that live there, and then create a society where unlike Germany, so like Germany had the Holocaust, but Germany was Germany for hundreds of years before that. Right. And and so you go to Germany, you can go to all types of museums and things where you go to churches and they're like, this is one guy that stood up against the Holocaust, one German. And so he's our hero for the rest of our life. Yeah. Because they got a, there's a context before that. In this culture, man, we have no, we don't have any sense of that. It's just like centuries of decontextualized stuff and created this structural system of, uh, of the, 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 the confluence and the, the like, unholy matrimony of race and class and power and the way that all of these things come together. And we don't remember who we were before this. Like we, you, I could say my people were German or Irish or whatever, but like, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. I, you do 23 and me, it comes back, tells you wherever you came from. You're like, oh, great. That's cool. Scotland. Yeah. Well, whatever. You don't know so what that so means. To, There's no, yeah, I 